Very special show today. We only had two guests coming back to the show. So Dado, this is very special because second time we have in 70 episodes somebody coming back. That means I was impressed the first time and secondly, lots of stuff happened in the meantime. So maybe explain to our viewers what you do. So uh, I'm Dado, I'm the co-founder of Scopernia. Uh, we try to help big organizations with reinventing themselves with transformation mm -hmm. and change. Uh, and apart from that, I'm also co-founder of two uh, startups. One is uh, Social Cedar, yeah. which is a platform enabling employee advocacy, uh, important today in the uh, battle for talent and HR. Uh, and I'm also the co-founder of Speakerspace, which is a platform where speakers and organizers can meet yeah. and find each other. And that was the whole topic of the last show. Uh, if you haven't subscribed on that, you should do that now. So today we want to talk about networks. Ecosystems, uh, Exactly, yeah. yeah. I, wanted, I wanted you to start filling it in. So why? So in, uh, in 2018, I wrote a book with Omar Mohuts on the topic of uh, corporate venturing. Mm -hmm. Which was really about because I thought we would be talking today. I thought we would be talking corporate venture, but no, he launched a new company today. <laughs> Stuff happens. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, I, I truly believe that. Uh, well, in 2014, with with Yoko Dron, I wrote a book on digital transformation. Yeah. Um, after a few years, we started to uh, to see that it was difficult for big companies to really reinvent themselves and to completely change course. Uh, so therefore, we saw an opportunity where startups and scale-ups could work together with bigger corporates mm -hmm. to, uh, to really do innovation and change their uh, directions. Uh, but more and more, I started to realize that also the bigger motherships could start yeah. to work together uh, and that probably the leverage effect that they would have if they really work together in partnerships and ecosystems um, could be more impactful than just working with startups and, uh, and scale-ups. Um, so therefore, we're launching a new book. Uh, which will probably be released in May this year. Uh, together just, with you're just trying to come back for a third time, right? Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> I'm more than happy to. So uh, in uh, in May to, uh, 2020, together with my partner uh, Niels van Dam, mm -hmm. uh, I'm writing a book called Meta Systems: uh, How to Build Partnerships, Trustful Partnerships for Growth. Yeah. Um, and I really believe that the trustful part is uh, extremely important mm -hmm. because we see that that's where companies are struggling so, today. Let me challenge you a bit straight away. Right. Sure. So how do we build trust? Because that's the, the biggest essential factor, right? Well, there is a great uh, quote from uh, Hang Hemingway uh, saying, the best way to see whether you can trust people is to actually trust them. Uh, <laughs> and, and I really think that's, that's what we need to do. Because if you look today how companies are organized, um, for them, control is better than yeah. trust. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you yeah. think about governance, um, we even have an interesting debate whether governance and trusts are conflicting with each other mm -hmm. uh, or good governance and trusts are conflicting with each other. But I truly believe that uh, if companies want to bet on ecosystems and want to bet on true partnerships, that they need to give trust first mm -hmm. um, and not work with a mindset of NDAs, uh, control, uh, liabilities, risk, etc., etc., which is typically the mindset of uh, companies today. Um, which in a way you need to balance, of course. Yeah, so yeah, right. uh, we, we're not saying that you need to let go yeah. of all the uh, things that you need to check. Uh, but I believe that we need to become more brokers of trust. Mm -hmm. So that's our idea, uh, that we need to give trust internally to people um, and to the internal organization, but also especially to the outside world. Um, and then see how we can do that. And I think that's the uh, biggest challenge for organizations today is to uh, trust each other um, and to work together. And I, I uh, believe that that will be our biggest line of defense against the big tech players. Yeah. So if you think about Amazon, yeah. Alibaba, etc., uh, I think uh, we can't battle them alone. So no. the best way we can do is work together. So now I might go itty gritty on you, but you say partnerships and network. Yes. Same thing, different thing? How do I look at it? That's a very good question. Uh, first of all, I see that a lot of companies call their suppliers partners, yeah. which is but beautiful. It's like, uh, yeah, it's just but giving it's, it another it's not name. True. Uh, yeah, we it's call not our true. customers, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your, your customers, your employees, so everybody yeah. can be a Everybody's partner. Partners. Yeah. But that's not, uh, of course, it's it's a, a way to please uh, yeah. certain stakeholders. It, it, for me, from a pure sales point of view, it's like 20 years ago, it's solution selling type of methodologies. Like yes, correct. Common. There's a lot of school. similarities yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so the difference for me is a supplier solves an individual problem mm -hmm. uh, or an employee can work together with you in a company and they're being paid to do a certain job. Um, but I think a partnerships, partnership is really about a collaborative uh, opportunity 
opportunity. And once you have a collaborative or a common opportunity, mm -hmm. that's where you really can uh, start to explore partnerships. And we believe in equal partnerships. So today what you see is a lot of companies uh, try to be the big boy and then yeah. you have a lot of smaller partners around them. Uh, and they try to work in, in walled gardens where mm -hmm. they can really control everything with, which is happening. And within our new book, we are um, making a statement throughout what we call the wild garden, mm -hmm. uh, where you work much more with equal partnerships, where there's nobody on top of the food chain, yeah. um, where you have a shared purpose, a, a common goal, uh, also a bigger goal, I would say, than purely the commercial <laughs> part. For some weird reason, while you're talking, I see this trend, what you see now in gardens, it's you leave a piece of the garden go wild yeah. for the bees industry. Actually, that's what you're saying. That's what you we're saying. You take a piece and you, you see, and actually the whole garden will flourish because of the one piece. Yeah, that's that's the chaotic uh, part. That's a very good that you make that uh, that metaphor because... You in, can use it in the book. You yeah, thank you, uh, <laughs> Michael. In, in, um, in the wild garden, what you have is you have like 50 animal species and it's yeah. very controlled, but you will never have the serendipity of something new and wild coming up. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the uh, idea of the wild garden where there's less, less much control. So of course, there is more... Uh, uh, things that are uncontrollable, but by being more uncontrollable, you have the power of serendipity and exotic plants that suddenly yep. pop up, uh, which gives much more opportunity. And we believe that companies need to balance the walled and the wild garden with each other. Uh, and again, their trust is important. It was great having you in the show, Dado. You're always welcome to come back, hopefully with a new story, with a new book. And then uh, I will, uh, when we post the show, probably put the link of the book or the pre-order in the slides. It would be great. Great to see you back. Thank you so much, Thanks Michael. For Thank you.